What's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle here with your week 13 wide receiver rankings. We're going to hit it and quit it with these top 30 tonight. Get through them as quick as we can so you can get your lineup set and ready to dominate your league in week 13. Hopefully all of you are either fighting for a playoff spot, already locked a playoff spot up. Some leagues, they start their playoffs this early. So if you're already starting your playoffs, good luck this week. Whatever the case may be, we need dubs this week, and that's what we're going to be going for. So let's hop into my top 30 rankings, starting at number 30, Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins at 30 and 29. You know, the good news with T. Higgins last week is he ended up scoring that touchdown. Great to see for fantasy owners who were worried that you were going to lose a lot of value with him. But the one thing that we know about Cincinnati is they're going to have to pass the ball, right? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They're going to have to throw the ball. Miami is a team that definitely can put up some points, but it's definitely a team that can be thrown against every once in a while as well. So hopefully Higgins, you know, can find the end zone again. Hopefully Tyler Boyd can get a little bit more volume. I mentioned it in my wide receiver start and sit show that what I really need to see from them is yards after the catch. They need to be putting these guys in situations because they can't really push the ball down the field too well right now that they can make plays after the catch and that is what I'm hoping for at number 28 Michael Pittman Jr. not a great week last week however he still had nine targets which led the wide receiver so he's still getting a lot of that volume right now which is what we need to see from wide receivers yeah maybe he's a guy that's going to be a little bit of a lower floor each week because Philip Rivers does target his running backs and tight ends so much but it's clear that he's the number one target in the wide receiver core right now which is what we need this late in the season Brashad Perryman at number 27 I really like his upside this week this is a guy who week in and week out over the last several weeks since coming back from injury has started to really uh, perform like he did last year when he was in Tampa Bay towards the end of the season I mean in week nine Goes seven targets, five receptions for 101 yards and two touchdowns. And since then, hasn't been that bad of an option. And since week nine as well, in week nine, 20 yards per reception. In week 11, 27 yards per reception. In week 12, 19 yards per reception. So this is a guy that is also making the big plays, liking him this week against Las Vegas. At number 26, Corey Davis. I mentioned it uh, also in the start and sit show for wide receivers that Corey Davis, based on volume alone right now, is the wide receiver 27 over the last several weeks. He is a guy that has not been scoring any touchdowns because why? They go to A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry, but he is a guy that is still seeing plenty of volume. Now, a lot of things also rely on Adam Humphreys. Janu Smith dealing with a knee injury right now as well. You know, if he's the true number two target in this offense, that volume should continue to come, which could make him a very safe floor week in and week out. And number 25, Jarvis Landry. Love Jarvis Landry's performance last week. Glad to finally see him and Baker Mayfield back to it. At number 25, going up against Tennessee this week, who gives up quite a few fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. Hopefully we see that trend continue with Jarvis Landry, and we don't see a a trend like we saw at times last year where you'd see one guy, then another, then another, then another. Hopefully it's Jarvis Landry throughout the rest of the season to make things a lot less complicated for fantasy owners. At number 24, Julio Jones. I have him this low right now. Number one, not even 100% sure he's going to play. But number two, if he does play, are we sure he's just not going to end up being a decoy? You know, when when Jar- or when or uh, Julio Jones is on the field, typically he is good to go. But this hamstring injury, very concerning for me right now. More than likely, he's going to end up being out this week. But if he were to be active for some reason, maybe he gets a few catches, but it's not going to be very many. Number 23, Debo Samuel. Good to see Debo Samuel last week. Get back, look healthy. The hamstring looks good. But two things this week. Number one, going up against Buffalo. So he's going to have a tough matchup there. Number two, Brandon Ayuk coming off the COVID list. Both of these guys are starts for me against Buffalo because you're going to have to throw the ball, but just expect limited upside this week. At number 22, Amari Cooper, kind of the same thing. Going up against Baltimore, it can be a tough defense, obviously. I like Amari Cooper. Absolutely balled out on Thanksgiving Day once again. Just I'm thinking that upside is a little bit more limited this week. 
Number 21, Chase Claypool. And I've actually got a few teammates here right together. Number 21 is going to be Chase Claypool. And then moving on to number 20, Juju. And number 19, Deontay Johnson. All three of these guys right next to each other because... Honestly, it's going to be a tough call any single week. You know, we've seen weeks where Juju gets the volume, uh, Deontay then gets the volume, Chase Claypool has that big play upside every single week, Juju getting some looks in the red zone. We know that all three of these guys are starts. We know that all three of these guys can produce great numbers. They're all right next to each other, though, because the, the upside, planning for the upside every single week can be on a limited basis. So Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, Chase Claypool, all three of them right now, as I've said before, Deontay Johnson is the guy with the highest upside. Juju Smith-Schuster is the guy with the highest floor. Chase Claypool is going to be the guy that is going to have the lowest floor and the highest ceiling. He is the most volatile of the group. He could have the best week out of all of them. He could have the worst week out of all of them. At number 18, Michael Thomas going up against Atlanta. You would like to see Michael Thomas a lot higher, but Atlanta's defense has actually been a lot better, a lot better since what it looked like to begin the season, which, you know, is good for Atlanta, but it kind of stinks for those of us that were planning on really being able to play our offensive weapons against them down the stretch. I mean, on the year, they are still number two overall for fantasy points against among wide receivers. But over the last several weeks, that has dropped a little bit over the last four weeks. They're, they're a little bit further down the list. They're more along, along the lines of 10th overall. So the offense has done a lot better job recently than what it did to begin the season, which is good to see. But however, in this matchup where you've got a guy like Michael Thomas and then his quarterback, Taysom Hill, obviously upside limited through the passing game with him. We know Michael Thomas is going to get the volume, but if he doesn't score a touchdown, he's a guy that maybe is a decent wide receiver too at best right now. Robert Woods at number 17. Robert Woods this week. I've got Cooper Cup a little bit higher, even though Robert Woods has been the guy the last couple of we, uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, Robert Woods likely, in my opinion, getting Patrick Peterson this week, while Cup will be in the slot more often, getting away from Patrick Peterson. Hopefully, if that happens, then I expect Cup to see a little bit more volume. That's why I've got him at 15, and I've got Robert Woods at 17, just a little bit higher ceiling for Cup this week. And number 16. Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is going to have to step up this week with no Will Fuller for the rest of the year. So for those of you that have been holding on to Brandon Cooks and waiting for him, well, the time is now. He's had some very good games uh, recently over the last, I mean, three of his last four games, he has at least 80 yards. He only has three touchdowns, though, this season. He only has one game over 100 yards. He has another one where he's got 95. But that big performance against Jacksonville where he had 161 yards is what really sticks out. I think a lot of people were expecting a little bit more of him this season, but now he's the number one in that offense. So now we have to wait and see what's going to happen as he gets number one coverage because Will Fuller is the guy that's had number one coverage so far. Moving forward, it's going to end up being Brandon Cooks. So what's going to happen with Brandon Cooks? We'll have to wait and see what goes on. I still expect some big plays. I still expect a good upside. It's Deshaun Watson. It's the Houston Texans. They're going to rip the ball around the field. They're going to throw it. And because Cooks has been pretty steady, again, 80 yards at least in three of his last four games, we could see kind of the same floor for him this coming week. Number 14, Tyler Lockett again. Tyler Lockett, flip the coin. What are you going to get this week? That big performance? Or are you going to get a performance that's, uh, you know, okay at best? That's the biggest thing right now with Tyler Lockett is that if you play him, you're either going to get like a wide receiver three or four or you're going to get a wide receiver one. You know, weeks 10 and 11, nine targets in each of those games. I mean, week 11, for those of you in PPR leagues, he had nine receptions, 67 yards, and a TD. Great against Arizona, but last week against Philadelphia, only three receptions for 23 yards. And again, that's part of that volatility that we've seen all season long. It's a Giants team that is likely going to have Bradbury on DK Metcalf, though, which isn't going to make much difference for DK Metcalf because he's a grown man. But for Tyler Lockett, that can make a little bit of difference um, playing against some weaker cornerbacks on that team. Number 13, Devontae Parker. He was my Manscaped must start of the week if Ryan Fitzpatrick starts. And as of right now, Ryan Fitzpatrick still scheduled to start this week. Nothing has come out and said that Tua is going to be the guy starting. So as of right now, as of this recording, we are still running with Devontae Parker as our 
uh, Manscaped must start. So we will uh, we'll see what happens throughout the next couple of days when a decision is made on the starting quarterback. If it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, we obviously 115% need to have Devontae Parker in our lineup. We saw it this past week. What you get from Devontae Parker is the number one target. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, you get a whole lot of targets, a whole lot of receptions, and a whole lot of yards. Expect that to continue. Terry McLaurin at number 12. Terry McLaurin, one of the most underrated underrated wide receivers in the game right now for the Washington football team. Seven receptions in five of his last six games, 90 yards in four of his last five games. Yeah, we'd love to see some more TDs than that, what he's had so far this season, but you can argue that there is not a safer player in fantasy football right now than Terry McLaurin. He's getting the volume. He's getting the yards. We know we're going to get that on a consistent basis from him. And then we just need the touchdowns to put him back over at the top. DeAndre Hopkins at number 11. Nothing against DeAndre Hopkins this week other than he gets Jalen Ramsey. And the thing about that is not only does he get Jalen Ramsey, but I'm worried about uh, I'm worried about Kyler Murray's shoulder as well. So I've got DeAndre Hopkins quite a bit lower this week. Not too much lower. To be honest with you, the consensus only has him a couple of spots higher than this. So I'm not that much lower on him than most people. So if anybody out there is a DeAndre Hopkins or an Arizona fan and you're offended by this ranking, just know I'm not the only one concerned this week. You're still starting him, though. You're still playing him. You're just worried that some of that top wide receiver one upside is missing this week. At number 10, Keenan Allen. He gets New England this week. Another tough matchup. I've got him a little bit lower than the consensus this week as well, about five spots lower. And you know me. I love me some Keenan Allen, right? He's my boy. The jersey's hanging up behind me. But... This week in a tough matchup, I'm just taking it easy on him. The dude has double-digit targets in all but three games this season. 29 targets over the last two games. He scored a touchdown in five straight games. Keenan Allen is one of the best wide receivers in the game right now. Doesn't get nearly enough credit for it this week, though. Upside a little bit more limited. And number nine, Allen Robinson. Just at this point, kind of waiting to hear what happens with Jeff Okuda from the Detroit Lions. Honestly, uh, Allen Robinson could make a jump a couple of spots higher for me by the time the week is done. But Allen Robinson, a great play this week against that Detroit secondary. At number eight, Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs this week. Again, love me some Stefan Diggs. Dude has been an absolute baller so far. He is more than likely going to get Richard Sherman, though, this week. So just a little bit lower. Um, not necessarily saying Richard Sherman is going to shut him down for any reason, but this is also a San Francisco team that, uh, you know, if they don't keep up, they run the ball quite a bit. So we know that they can keep the ball away from the other offense. He's got Richard Sherman as well. What if they do blow up and have a really great first half, uh, and then San Francisco, um, and, you know, trailing the entire time, maybe they start running the ball a little bit more. So that's the only reason I've got him a little bit lower, but honestly at number eight, it's only a spot lower than the consensus right now. At number six and seven, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson got these two guys right back to back. Adam Thielen back this week after being on the COVID list last week. A great matchup for them. They both should continue to eat as usual. A.J. Brown at number five going up against Cleveland. Dude has that tremendous upside every single week. If you own A.J. Brown, you got to play him. Last week had a lot of A.J. Brown questions, you know. Yep, there's going to be some volatile weeks, but there's also going to be those other weeks. He's a little bit more consistent than what Tyler Lockett is, but honestly, it's kind of the same thing. They both have these up and down performances. They're really reliant on a lot of that deep passing. He is questionable right now. He is questionable. It sounds like he hasn't practiced as much over the last couple of weeks or the last couple of days, but keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on that. If for some reason he is shown as being limited or will be out on Sunday, we will adjust as necessary. At number four, DK Metcalf. Like I said, DK Metcalf this week, yep, he's going to get Bradbury in New York, but no one cares because DK Metcalf, he is a grown man. I mean, he made Darius Slay basically go, go, cry the other day (laughs) oh man that was one heck of a matchup calvin ridley at number three again with no julio jones we know calvin ridley is just going to absolutely eat calvin ridley high 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 upside this week and then of course at number one and two nothing else to say really about these guys Devonta adam tyree killed two of the best in the league right now 
and honestly, the two best wide receivers at the fantasy position currently. Some notable players to run through real quick that I have listed as starts this week. C.D. Lamb is a start still for me this week, even with a little bit of a down performance last week on Thursday night football. Well, not really Thursday night football, but Thanksgiving Day football, even with that still running with C.D. Lamb this week, hoping he bounces back uh, and comes back from that uh, that drop in the end zone last week. Brandon Ayuk also listed as a start for me this week, uh, but I'm thinking that that upside is a little bit limited now that they got him and Debo both back on the field together at the same time. A little bit more upside considering there's no George Kittle. When there is a George Kittle, then that would make it maybe even a little bit worse. Uh, But we know they love to run the ball a lot as well. So that just limits it a little bit for me. Gabriel Davis, I like Gabriel Davis this week. I've mentioned it over and over. The dude, his last couple of starts has over 70 yards and a touchdown. So when uh, John Brown is out, Gabriel Davis is a good bet to score a touchdown and be really uh, relied upon in that offense. Jacoby Myers, not loving the upside this week. Still have him listed as the star. He's still the number one option in that offense, and he's been the most consistent wide receiver as of lately. Nelson Aguilar, kind of the same thing. Up and down performances, but he's been pretty consistent in terms of what he brings you on a weekly basis he's a guy that you can plug in as your wide receiver three you should get decent enough decent enough numbers to cover you there and then you also know that you've got a little bit more upside to take you into that wide receiver two spot at some point in time Russell Gage at the very end here. I like Russell Gage this week, but a lot of it depends on Julio. If Julio's out, I'll go back to Russell Gage. Now, like Russell Gage last week, he didn't get a whole lot of targets last week, but keep in mind that they absolutely ran away with that game a lot quicker against Las Vegas than what a lot of people assumed they would. That really limited the upside for Russell Gage because they ran the ball so much after that with double-digit carries by both Brian Hill and Ito Smith. So Russell Gage this week going up against New Orleans, that probably will not be a problem. And Russell Gage, if there's no Julio Jones, should bounce back with a pretty decent week. There you have it, Headliner Nation. My top 30 plus some notable players for the wide receiver position this week. Hit that comment or hit that like button down below for me. And of course, comment if you've got questions on any wide receivers that I may not have listed. And as always, subscribe to the Fantasy Headliners right here if you haven't done so yet. Make sure you tune into the live show Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we'll talk through as many of your start and sit questions as possible. And of course, just have a great time on Saturday night. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Fantasy Headliner. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace out, everybody.